Hello everybody, my name's Chris, and, uh, and much like Tim of Airsoft GI fame, my name has not changed since the last video I did. So yeah, um, going to be looking at a few more of the things that I've bought recently, uh, in the continuance of that, the videos I did recently. Um, I like the word recently. Uh, we've got just a few bit this time, unfortunately the bit I'm sure you are all most really wanted to see me ripping into some cardboard <clears throat> I'm not going to be doing that this time because due to the fact that I got my post at work and I cycled into work and I didn't have the room in my RAF backpack to fit the enormous cardboard box that my th these very small pouches came in um, yeah I had to open that up and break it down so I could <coughs> actually bring it all home. So, yeah, that I'm sure you'll all be very, very upset to hear that you won't be seeing that part. But you know, you know, at least we get the secondary objective, which is to, you know to look at some products that could be useful for airsoft and uh, talk about them a little bit. Um, got two orders this time, but sort of arrived at the same day. Like I say, just a couple little bits. Um, few things, the main things I'm going to be looking at are, I say we've got some mold pouches here, uh, these are from skdtactical.com, I'm not sure if there's a hyphen in that, I can't remember, uh, but I'll put their URL down in the description there because they are an excellent website, I've been using them for a while now, I've not ordered from them that many times, but they are, the prices are very good, they stock, the range of products that they do stock, you can tell they've taken care in choosing them. Um, and that you know the, they are guys who know what they're talking about, and they dispatch things ridiculously fast. I mean, you, you can pretty much guarantee if you place an order, it will be in that post the same day, and that's even. I mean, if you're in the UK, even late at night because of the time difference. Well, not maybe not late at night, but late into the afternoon. So you've just got back from work. It's six o'clock. You know, you can, it will probably still put it in the post that day. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get slight downside. You don't get to choose which courier you go with, it has to be USPS and I'm not a massive fan of them because then you end up having to deal with parcel force when it, the, your stuff gets over to this side of the pond but like I say, this, this website, they really are excellent um, and I would, I would say anyone looking for some good tactical gear uh, fitting into their loadout then absolutely recommend them every time um, couple of other small bits also this time from firesupport.co.uk that's fire-support okay, I'll just put the URL down in the comments um, because I've realised after my last couple of videos that if you're not a YouTube uh, what do they call them? partner then you can't put clickable URLs in your videos why? I don't know it's not exactly it's not exactly a big deal is it? I mean why say that you can't have that? why does it does it really matter? I don't think so. Considering I can just put them down in the comments, how much of a difference does it make to just put it here instead? Not that much. But oh well, yeah. A couple of bits from Fire Support. Um, it's got them around a bit. This t shirt, uh, Millspec Monkey t shirt. This little patch here, and some BBs. I'm not going to be going into. I'm not going to go into great depth. That's not the idea of these videos. I'm not going to be going into a whole massive spiel about. Uh, molly gear and tactical gear in general and equipment and how you should do your loadout stuff like that because that would be a very very long video and I'm not going to try and do that now I may do it at some point go into a bit more detail covering gear and equipment but in this one I'm just going to mainly talk about these pouches and why I like them um, I'm also not going to go into a massive massive long talk and debate and ups and downs disadvantages advantages etc of different brands of BB because uh Again, that would take a long time. Um, yeah, that that would be a very long discussion going into all the different brands out there. So I'll just be uh, just be sticking with just a quick talk about this particular bag here. Um, for now, stuff I'm not doing. I'll put to the side and do those second. So start off one of the pouches I got from SKD Tactical. This is the Blue Force gear double SR25 or 7.62 NATO weapon of your choice magazine pouch uh, the 
10 speed magazine gun. Now, as I mentioned, I've already got a few of these for my M4. Uh, I mentioned that in the pistol mag video because I've already got a fair few of these pouches for my M4 type magazines, uh, you know, 556 five, Stanag. Um, and I've also got some of the pistol ones. And since I just recently bought myself a King Arms uh, FN Foul, the tactical carbine version, um, I'm going to need some pouches that will fit 7.62x51 type magazines. Obviously, every gun 6mm, but you know, we just we say these, the real steel uh, types of ammunition, just so people can understand the sort of sizes and types of magazines we're talking about. Comes in a plastic bag, which, as I mentioned in the pistol patch video, these things, they are, end of the day, the main part of the pouch is just a thin elastic. And this stuff, I'm not exactly sure what it's made of, to tell you the truth. Um, not actually looked into it. It's it's pretty tough. I would say as elastic goes, it's probably the toughest elastic you can get. Um, but you don't want to go. You wouldn't want to go prone crawling around on a concrete, rough concrete floor with these on the front of your vest. Put it that way. Um, they they'll take a fair amount of abrasion and sort of the pointy bits of your mags sticking into them on the inside and cuts and stuff and sticks and sharp edges of stones and trees, you know, they'll, they'll take a fair bit of abuse. They're not going to fall apart just because they're thin material. They are decently made, um, but they are not quite as sturdy as a sort of, you know, your general magazine pouch that say, you know, one of these that I'll do in a second, that's just all cordura all the way around. The elastic isn't that top. Uh, but yeah, the um, reason I went for these is that they are super, super fast to pull your magazines out for. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one of my foul magazines here to demonstrate, but I if you want to check out the pistol mag uh, pouch comparison video that I did, um, I think I can put annotations to my own videos, maybe if the gods of YouTube will allow me. If so, I'll put an annotation to that one there, and you can see the pistol mag pouch that Blue Force Gear does in usage. Um, basically, this elastic stuff just grips your magazine nice and tight, and pull that out. There's no flap to undo, there's no bungee cord to pull to the side. You can put your magazines in one of these, and you could have your vest upside down, shaking it as much as you like. They won't fall out. They will, you know, they hold your mag securely. But when it comes to pulling out, there's absolutely nothing you have to do in t sort of preparation of the pouch, as it were, that you'd have to do with other pouches. Absolutely nothing at all. Yank it out, straighten your gun. Easy as that, so very fast. Um, compared to a lot of other brands of pouches out there, they're also fairly cheap. Um, you know, they're not, they're not dead cheap. It's not like buying Chinese-made stuff. Um, they are designed to be used by the real people, should we say, the ones in the real shit shooting real bullets. Um, so they're they're not dead cheap, but they're not bad. I would say, pretty much comparable cost to a double shingle pouch made of Kajura etc. Uh, for the same type of magazines, cost wise about the same, possibly slightly less. Um, but that's another good thing about these for yourself. Uh, Great characteristics about them, apart from the speed, is the weight. They just, they just weigh. They're just absolutely nothing. Even they don't use they don't use metal press studs. You've just got the Velcro there. You've got this black line here. There's just Velcro on the inside of that. And then when you attack, when you've threaded your straps here through intermittently between the vest and your your molly webbing here, you just finish it up. You just tuck it on the inside of there, and that's it secured. And let me assure everyone now that Velcro does that job just fine. You, I could understand people thinking, well, that's not going to be very secure, but uh, I've used the M4 size mag ones um, a few times in skirmish games. I've tested them out a lot, just sort of practice shooting, and they're not going to fall off. They are, once you've threaded them through the mold and Velcro them on, they are absolutely solid. Materials, construction-wise, apart from the elastic, 
um, which is this sort of weak point, should we say, but the uh, the straps here, the webbing straps on the back, the main back piece the elastic is sewn onto, that's pretty strong, it's tough stuff, made of just all the materials you'd expect really, I'd imagine it's Kodura just the same as pretty much any pouch. Um, these come in, what we've got, they come in uh, ACU or U. TP, I think it's called, whatever that weird grey American stuff is. Uh, black, coat brown, multicam, or this one is range green. Now, another advantage to these, apart from the speed and the lightweight and the price, is if you're the sort of person you don't just have one layer of pouches on your molly vest, you've got, say, you've got some shingle pouches and then you want to put a couple more on top of it so you've got layers sticking out of the vest. These are absolutely ideal for that because you've got your shingle pouch sticking out so far and you put this on top and you load your magazines into it and as soon as you use those magazines, if you use those magazines first before the ones in your shingle pouches, you pull this out and this elastic will just pop back dead flat again once it's empty. So as soon as that magazine is withdrawn it's almost as if the pouch is gone and it's not adding that depth and sort of overall increased profile to your rig and that's nice. So yeah, these things can't really can't really recommend them enough to be honest. Um, you don't see them that much, I have to say. They're not they don't seem to have caught on as much as they perhaps deserve to at this point. I think they are gaining popularity, especially in the last maybe year or two. Um, you see more and more people um, as I mentioned again in the pistol pouch video, they aren't the most robust, so take into account what kind of skirmish game you've been playing. You can be hardcore milsim, you can be down on your belt buckle, giving it that um, through the mud and the stones and the twigs and the thorns, etc. In which case, stick to your full on solid cordura pouches. If you're not going to be doing that, I mean, even if you are going to play in the woods, as long as you're not going to be crawling around much, then these things, absolutely fantastic. Lightweight, fast to draw from, solid, keep things very, very low profile. That is uh, the key word here with these things. Um, just standard mold straps. Yeah, good gear, very good gear. And we've mentioned to the whole pouch stacking thing that I mentioned a second ago, Another purchase from SKD Tactical. Two of these things. These are the 762 by 51 NATO shingles by Tactical Taylor. These ones are in multicam just because SKD Tactical didn't have Ranger Green or OD in stock. And I think they only had, at the time, Wortley's, and I think they only had, had this or black. Um, I'm not a big fan of multicam everything. I'll, you'll never see me wearing multicam freaking boots, trousers. U backs, helmet, plate carrier, and then all the pouches, and then putting multicam bits on my gun. I don't, you know, if you, if any of you have that, if that's what you're into, you know, absolutely far away. But I don't, I tend to think people who do that just end up like looking like a big splodge of multicam, and it, it's not necessarily the best move. But it's a good camera pattern, there's no denying it. The British military just recently adopted it. It's issue now, everyone out in Afghan's wearing it, the Americans have adopted it for Afghan as well. Um, it's battle proven, it's a good pattern. But yeah, hundreds of pouches. Um, like I say, made by Tactical Taylor, these are just all Cordura uh, Wap Denier. I'm not sure, I would guess a thousand standard, I'm pretty sure it's a thousand. All nicely stitched. You've got a couple of rows of molly webbing on the front, although my the first slight issue I did see that I would have liked to have another row of that just there. Because that way, when you're trying to stack your pouches, it'll be that bit more secure. You won't have the bottom bit possibly flapping up.